Okay, so today I want to revise this pattern, which is for these paws. These are Cotton Flops paws, you have seen them before if you've watched my channel. There's nothing wrong per se with them, they are okay, but uh, I would like to revise the pattern so that it's symmetrical and then I don't have to worry about left and right paws. Th these ones have a slight, slight left and right to them, so uh, I'm gonna make it symmetrical. So these paws, right now, this is the entire pattern, this is all I have. Which means uh, I don't have a lining piece, so I need to make a lining piece. Uh, also, just, just, you know, make it cleaner and clearer in general. <laughs> so to start, I guess we'll just start sketching. I like sketching pen usually, so... Mm, maybe not. Maybe. Yeah, we'll use this one. Okay, so I already started, but uh, I wasn't happy with how it was going, so we're starting again. And this time, I need to take into account some things, like uh, how it's going to be symmetrical. I'm taking a little bit of inspiration from Kloof suits here, like I'm thinking about their pattern in my mind. Um, I really recommend that pattern by the way, I bought it myself and it was great. Uh, it's not the one I use for my work, but I did make some paws with it. I'll probably sell them to be honest. Um, anyway, that's a little side note. Anyway, so our middle seam is going to be here-ish. So that means we only have to make one half of these claws. I don't know if this pattern's gonna work by the way, you are watching me create as we go. Uh, hmm. Don't really like those shapes. So we'll revise it in a different colour. It looks exactly the same, but a bit smaller. Okay, and then down like that. And I think that's probably okay, unless I want to try and like round things a bit more. Like, look at the shapes from my old pattern. Where is it? Oop, knocked my pencil sharpener over. What's that one? That's the first finger on my original pattern. So it was a lot smaller than it is here, but uh, maybe I should just... Where's the thumb actually? No, that's the one with the dart, the middle finger, pinky, you can't even see what I'm doing off screen, I'm just telling you, okay, there we go. That was the thumb on the original, but I do need to keep in mind it needs to be symmetrical now. To, um, no, it should be fine. Okay, and now to fold in half. Let me put the pin down and there we go. Now we have to cut this out after I put my lids back on my pens. Okay, so now we have this, which is symmetrical. And now I need to decide where I want the fingers to come off. So we'll switch to a red pen, I guess. And probably gonna be like there-ish. And now we're gonna draw around this on a different sheet of paper so we can preserve the pattern. I should mention this is an experiment 
not a tutorial, but you can use it as a tutorial if you want. The good thing about this now is oops, that I won't have to label it left and right. All of my old pattern, all of my old, <laughs> all of my old patterns have left and right written on them, and uh, you know, just making sure it's all symmetrical. I'm talking about paw patterns here, by the way. Um, some patterns still need left and right. <laughs> I mean, so, so would this. This will still need um, side A and B for each of the little fingers. But other than that, it will be symmetrical. Okay, so there is our little pattern, but that needs to come down a little bit. So, uh... I could like extend the gap here a bit, maybe I'll do that on a computer if I make a printable version of this pattern, but um, to be honest I, I'm pretty lazy with my pattern. <laughs> okay, so we have this. This is now our lining piece, so I could write on this um, times two lining. The instructions, are, I'm going to write them for just one part. On these old paws, I've written times two, and it's got left and right there, and see, right side, left side, those, I'm confused. But anyway, as you can see, I had times two and it was a bit confusing. When I picked that pattern up again the other day, I was like, what is going on here? I'm confused. Anyway, so, I should label these. finish this up as well. So just fold it over and cut around. There we go. And we don't really need these. But we do need this. And this is now our hand, our wrist, palm. Uh, I'm going to say wrist. but you gotta flip them so probably labeled them like A times one A times one and then flip it over and then B times one B times one Okay now we get to the uh, more advanced thing which isn't really that difficult but you know it's a trick I learned recently ish considering I've been sewing for almost... How long have I been sewing for? Like 13 years-ish, on and off. And now I sew just my full-time job. Well, part of my full-time job anyway. I do, I do cha-chan as my full-time business. Okay, so we have our out piece. And now what we're going to do is create a dart. I'm going to draw around this so I know where it was originally. Okay, here is our midpoint. And then I'm going to hold it there. So you can't even see what I'm doing. We've got our midpoints here, and I'm going to hold it at the top there, which is going to be difficult so you can see. There we go, got it. 
and uh, I'm going to switch colour so you can see what I'm doing a bit more. Do red. So hold it at the very point and then just hold. wait no, before I do that I'm going to mark here as the centre. Okay, so mark at the top and bottom and then mark on your actual pattern piece too so that you can see when you do this and see how far you've come out and then draw around the pattern piece like that and draw a little line there uh, I think I extended it like this last time yeah so, and then we bring it back and out again. I hope I'm doing this far enough because I think I did it quite a distance on my old one. I am left-handed if you did not realize. Um, how am I gonna do this? God, I'm scared. Okay, all right, yeah, I need to mark there. Okay, and that should be done. So I just do that. And now we've got these two little lines here. What we're going to do with those is just bring them up and they will connect somewhere. I mean, you might have to force them to connect, don't just go straight lines or it might take forever. Um, but you know, you get a general feel of where it's going to be. And now, when we sew this, this is now a dart. So we'll pull that together and this will be a 3D shape. Not sure if I should have done this a little bit more out because uh, my old thumb pattern, if you look at it, yeah, you know it's about the same, be fine. Besides, this is just a trial run. You should always test your patterns before you say, okay, this is the final, final one. Um, I don't always test my patterns. Well, I do, but then I don't. It just depends what I'm doing. Like with cotton flop, I was like, okay, I'm just going to make them because I'm pretty sure the pattern might work. <laughs> okay, and then we have to do the same for this finger. Am I going to show making this in this video? Maybe I'll show like the finished result because I'm going to test this pattern on uh, one of my personal fursuits. Can you see what I'm drawing? <laughs> okay. I'm going to test this pattern on a personal suit I'm making, so, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I need to label these as, um, in and out, a times one, a times one. So, now we just have to cut these out. I should mention I have not included seam allowance, so uh, I'll, ha I'll have to add that on later when I'm cutting. Cutting cutting the fabric is what I meant to say. I should mark on the back that it is an A and B pattern. So this will be B times 1. And Okay, that is our pattern. Okay, so now I have all of my pattern pieces. It doesn't look like that many, but uh, we're gonna have, what, two, four, uh, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve pieces per paw. Keep in mind this doesn't have any paw pads since they're like claw hands. Um, you could use this technique to make like paw padded paws, like dog paws, cat paws, but yeah, it just takes more pattern pieces and you've got to make sure that the um, paw pads will fit inside the little fingers. Okay, if you wanted to add claws to your paws, there's tons of different ways to do that. Um, the way I make these, I like the, um, you know, let me go and get the cotton flops paws to explain what I mean. So the way I make cotton flops paws, or the 
pattern is so that the um, like the raised bit is on the inside of the claw and then it kind of tapers in at the front so that's how I got the shape whereas you'll see a lot of paw patterns have the dart on the outside here like on these regular dog paws um, so you could put a claw in this dart here if you wanted to but uh, you know, th there's just the difference in where to put darts okay that was that I should also mention that I haven't included a trimming for you know, around the cuff of the pot Conflops paws aren't actually finished as such they just look good on the outside and horrific on the inside but it's fine because this is a personal suit on my um, suits I make to sell I do you know, properly line my paws and finish them with cuffing and all, all of that stuff <laughs> but for my personal suits I'm just like you know it's for me I don't really care that much um, but I'll try and cuff these paws if I can be bothered um, we'll see the best part of any day taking off your little sticky note look it's Hannah Montana too <laughs> I should mention we're making paws for this dude who is Triceratops so far I haven't named him properly he's a Triceratops and a bat in one creature anyway so we're using um, these blankets you'll see I'll show you but yeah this is my fourth fursuit we didn't add fur direction to these, so, uh, up. And the lining doesn't have a fur direction, because it's lining and it doesn't have fur, or it shouldn't. <laughs> okay, so we've got this blanket material. I have talked about this before, but let me just show you why you might want a bit of experience if you're going to use this. So here is a piece that is out of focus. Is it in focus now? Um, maybe. Okay, but basically you pull it and it just kind of... yeah. So, <laughs> you want to avoid that. So we have a really big seam allowance with these. Uh, these are not fabric scissors. These are, but they're too clunky to use for this tiny detail work. But we're gonna try anyway. Normally I don't film this kind of thing so I can scooch around and just get everywhere when I'm trying to cut these things out. So here we go. Okay so as you can see we have left uh, quite a bit of seam allowance and I cut these pieces out very not neat. Also we are using this piece to make our other side so we're just gonna Flip. I'm gonna sneeze. I did not sneeze, <laughs> but anyway, so we're gonna use this to make sure you've flipped it. This is the wrong side, it's difficult to tell on camera, but uh, this is the right side, it's all silky, and this is the other side, which is also silky, but it's a bit less neat. So, flip it. To be honest, there's not a lot of difference between the side A and B. And we're using these scissors because we need to get a bit closer today. Today, this time when we're cutting, I need a new pair of these desperately. If you're curious, these scissors are from The Works, which is a little craft shop here in England, or the UK in general, and uh, they cost me a pound. And I go through them quite quickly. <laughs> I need to get some actual little fabric scissors about this size. Okay, so my camera died in the middle of there, cutting out all this fabric, but that's okay because it was a bit of a boring process. I still need to de-fluff it, it's going to be bits of fluff everywhere. I do have a lint roll though, so I should use that. Anyway, uh, I sewed my lining as like this, so I didn't cut it out, I just sewed around this. My sewing machine made some horrible clunking noises, and it got jammed. Um, so I had to take it apart and mend it. I, mean, I just had to take out some of the tangled threads, so it's fine. Yeah, you can you can see what kind of occurred. <laughs> Whoops. It's okay, but um, 
Yeah, I think that's why we're supposed to use stretch needles with stretch fabric or something. I'm new to sewing machines. Okay, so I need to neaten these up and then sew all of these. Okay, so I've uh, trimmed up the excess fabric off these. So now I can move on to sewing and I like to start with my dart pieces. So, it's so, get it? Haha, <laughs> because we're sewing. I have a tin here. So I got a tin of these little clips. I bought these on AliExpress, so they're kind of cheap. But I prefer these to pins for this kind of fabric. Just because uh, pins get kind of lost. <laughs> yeah, you can use pins if you want, it doesn't really matter. Always sew with a doubled over thread since it will be stronger. And now I can begin sewing. Whoop, the threads weren't lined up. Good job, me. I don't know if the way I start my um, threads off when I tie it so it doesn't unravel. I'm not sure if I do that incorrectly, but I mean, so far so good, you know? <laughs> And then blanket stitch the entire way down the dart. Alright, there's tons of tutorials on how to do um, blanket stitches, but if you are curious, you go in and then loop the thread over the needle and then pull. And you kind of tie a knot with each stitch, that's how it kind of gives it that strength. I'm going to move that clip now to the side so that I can see what I'm doing. And that is that. I might need to add a couple more stitches at the top here just to make the shape a bit better. But for now, tie it off the double thingy, cut the thread, Might have needed some more seam allowance on the inside of these, but we will see how it goes. This is a test after all. I should also mention when you are sewing these dart pieces, line up the deep so you can see it better. <laughs> um, line up each end of these bits. Line up that little corner and make sure that you sew it straight. Does that make sense? Can, can you see what I'm doing? So uh, we've got a piece here. Remember, right side goes on the inside so that... Right sides together, that's how you say it. <laughs> right sides together so that it'll be nice when you turn it out. Um, yeah, fold over but make sure you line up this corner with that corner and hold that in place. And you'll want to have the point of our dart, the very tip of our dart, like together as well. And just, uh, it'll be kind of tricky, but you have to make sure this longer bit is flat against this shorter bit. I know it doesn't make sense when you say it out loud, but um, think of it like sewing a curve, because that's kind of what you're doing. When you curve it round, it lay lays flat, so that's kind of what you're doing. I'm not very good at explaining things, I'm just better at doing them. <laughs> oh, it's such fluff! I'm just gonna say now, I did not leave enough um, space when I cut the darts. Yeah, yeah, you see how I've cut this? Don't do that. Just do not do that, because um, it won't end well. But this video wasn't, I said it wasn't a tutorial as such, more of a experiment. And um, I have failed my experiment. Uh oh. We'll see what happens. I just forgot how 
to use this fabric for these kind of paws, I guess, because it's been a while since I've made some claw paws. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie. I'm coming back before I've finished sewing up all my darts to say you should use a good thread. Get good thread, otherwise it will snap and not be good. I use Gutaman because Gutaman, good, it is good thread. So I also get the 500 meters because um, I do a lot of sewing. So I got this to put my sewing clips in, which are these things. I think I showed them earlier. Anyway, it makes the best noise when I open it. Just listen. It's, it's so good. I love it. So now I'm just sitting and instead of working, I'm like, hee hee, make funny noise. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> okay, I've been sewing these fingers there. Um, so I need to show you how I'm clipping them together and then sewing them. So I line up the end together, I guess. I, I leave a little bit of them. Um, I leave a bit off the end because I didn't really measure things properly, but that's okay. And then I clip. We're out of focus, but you, you can kind of see what I'm doing. There we go, we're in focus now. And uh, then I move the uh, points together and I clip that. And then I'll line up the edges and, oh, my needle. <laughs> and then I'll clip that. And then pretty much the same on the other side of it. So I'll just line it up with a little bit of excess off the end. Could my camera please stay in focus? There we go. Get another clip and clip it and then line it up. It might be a bit tricky because it'll want to bunch up because there's more fabric on one side but it will sew flat. Well, you know, flat it is also together fine and then I'll just sew around this leaving the bottom open because that's where your fingers go in so that you can wear it as a paw okay that's all I had to say about um, clipping it together I'll sew it together and then I'll return okay so I've uh, sewn up all my fingers and now I'm sewing together the palms or the hand wrist portion anyway so what I'm going to do is sew up the sides but I'll stop before I get to where the fingers go in and uh, then I'll show you what I do next. Okay, I forgot to film for a second, but what I'm doing is I'm sewing the fingers in. So I've clipped them all in. So there they are. And now I have to sew around them. You've got to make sure you sew around and not across, you know? So that's that. And then once I've sewn all that in, I will sew the lining. I'll just show you in a second, hopefully, if I remember. <laughs> okay, so now I've pinned the lining onto my paw that is inside out. So now I just need to sew roughly around the entire thing and then turn it inside out. And I will end up with one of these, which is a bit flat. So I'll need to stuff it and then cuff it and then it will be done. Someone's in an adventure. Danny Fazmid, where you going? Here she comes. I'm gonna wave at the camera. Hello. I'll leave you to it. Enjoy your wander around the tank. Okay, so I have finished the paws. Wow, I can't tuck them into my sleeves because uh, I'm home alone right now, so I don't have any helpers. But the paws, I think, were a success. I mean, I learned that I needed to leave more seam allowance on the backs of the thingies, but that's due to the materials. So, I should have known better. I've worked a lot of these materials. In fact, I've gotten two, two fursuits out of this brown material. Let me pick him up. Oh. My first fursuit, munchkin, a little bit ugly. My fourth fursuit, uh, doesn't have a name yet. I call him Triceratops because uh, we got some bat ears that don't look like bat ears. 
they were meant to be and then I changed things up. Is he a Triceropath anymore? I don't know, I'm gonna put Munchkin down because he's ugly. <laughs> but yes, uh, here are the paws made of the old pattern. These are Cotton Flops paws. And uh, honestly, these paws look pretty similar. There's some slight differences here and there, but overall, pretty much the same, so that's good. This is my first time wearing the paws with the head, so that's pretty cool, I guess. I, I don't know what else to say about this suit. There's a couple things I'm not too happy with. This entire suit was a complete experiment, so it was just, you know, do whatever I want with it. If it doesn't go well, well, it's going to be my suit anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I did line the mouth with Minky though. We have a Minky mouth. Can you see my mouth? I hope not. <laughs> Surprisingly, the ventilation so far is brilliant. I can breathe properly. If you know me, my past two, two previous, uh, personal, there we go, my past previous, my past pre, my last two personal suits had terrible ventilation, which is why, you know, they're my personal suits, so it gave me a chance to experiment. This one, it surprisingly went well. It's much more lightweight as well due to how I constructed it. Uh, what else can I say? I'll give you a quick overview of Triceropath so far. He still needs a tail. I'll make a tail when I design it. I'm struggling on design. But anyway, a quick overview. Triceropath is a complete experiment. He's made with scrap fabric and materials that I didn't need or deem the quality enough to use on products I want to sell. This plastic has scratches in it, so I used it on a personal suit. So that's that. <laughs> um, he's made with quarter inch foam and quarter inch foam, not ideal. I don't recommend it, but um, honestly, he's really lightweight because he doesn't have a solid block of foam here. He's got a hollow cube for a muzzle, basically. So that's nice and lightweight. The only one inch foam is a bit on the cheeks here to give him some definition and that was dug out of scrap bags of foam that I had lying around. His, uh, what would you call this, crest? Whatever you call this is just quarter inch foam still. Not ideal, there's a bit of um, felt in his <laughs> fluff. That's the problem with that material. It's, um, it's a crumb magnet <laughs> so you gotta make sure it's clean. Anyway, uh, this thing, it, even though it's half inch, qu quarter inch foam, I keep saying half inch, quarter inch foam, there are some um, EVA foam, like those puzzle mats. I cut one of those up to give him some bones inside the thing. So yeah, now it doesn't flop down. Before it was just flopping all over the place. So that's that. And uh, he is lined. If I flip him upside down, we can see that he is lined. I did a really messy job here because I could not be bothered. It's my personal suit, as I said, so it doesn't matter if it's messy. Obviously, with commercial work, I do make sure that I do things neatly. <laughs> or as neatly as possible, you know? So yeah, he's completely lined, and th that's that. Yeah, I like how his tongue can like come out to the side. I think that's kind of cute. Okay, that was Triceropath. Um, we've already seen the paws. That, that's what this video is about, the paws. So here they are. They, um, they're paws and they have cuffs and they are lined and yeah. Okay, that's it. Let's uh, go back to whatever we were talking about before I interrupted. This video is about paws and I'm now rambling about this suit. So um, yeah, I hope you like this fursuit too. I like his ears, they're wobbly. <laughs> I need to make a tail for him, so that's coming. And then I might make some like fursuit shoes instead of paws, just for like uh, then it's like multi-purpose since my other suit cotton flop doesn't have any like feet paws. So I'm rambling. Okay, I'll leave a link to Kloof Suit's paw pattern down in the description. So go and check that one out if you want a really good beginner paw pattern. That's also like looks really good and all of that cool stuff. I've used it myself for like um, practice, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, go and check that out, it's linked in the description, really recommend it. Uh, if anyone wants this paw pattern, feel free to let me know and I'll try my best, 
I'm not very good at writing instructions, but I'm trying my best. Anyway, I think that's everything I had to say in this video. Paw pattern, it worked! I've got paws! Yay! I even cuffed them so that they'd look neat. I'm gonna go before I keep rambling, so I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, sort of, hopefully. <laughs> Links to all my social medias are down in the description, so feel free to check those out. Please do not hit the like button, as that probably hurts, and that's not very nice. So maybe shake his hand instead. With that being said, I hope to see you in the next one, and bye! Dinosaur horns are for holding friends. This friend won't fit. Yay! Oh. Okay, I'm gonna go now.